Hey guys, Yankee Prepper, and this is the next video installment in my series, the BWCA trip. Today I want to talk to you about what I wore into the into the B-Dub and uh, what I packed. I packed a five pound uh, sea bag for this trip, and I want to talk to you about the clothing that I picked, uh, considering the environment and the weather. Having said that, I'm also going to go off in different directions and uh, talk to you about using this basic formula for clothing, the layered system that I that I use, and how you could augment it to even go into colder systems. You know, to tell you the truth, I could talk for hours on these subjects. I mean, I love this. I love doing this video series. I should have done this a long time ago, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm contemplating changing the name of my channel or starting up a new one. Uh, I'm really enjoying this, and uh, I could go on and on. But I am trying to squeeze this into a nutshell for you so you get the, the at least the basics of it. And this is my basic formula, my basic layering formula for keeping warm. What you wear can definitely make or break your trip, right? I mean, if you're miserable and cold, that's the only thing you're ever going to remember. And if you're bringing somebody new along, like your kids or your wife or a friend, that's all they're going to remember and they're not going to want to come back. So this is a very simple tried and true method. I didn't make this up. You know, I picked the certain clothing that works for me. But this is, you know, this knowledge has been around for a long time. The layered system really does work. And with some of the new materials that they've come out with in just the last five to ten years, it's made it a lot easier to travel light with this stuff and be comfortable even in, in really cold temperatures. Now, the environment I'm going into and looking ahead for the weather of this trip, you know, I'm looking at highs into the you know mid-70s all the way down into uh, sub-freezing temps, probably mid to low 20s. So I need to plan my clothing pack out with a lot of variance, a lot of adaptability. The good news is with the uh, materials they have today, especially the uh, layering effect really shines in these situations, especially for light backpacking. Or, or Let's start with the base layers first. I choose a silk polyester blend, about 50-50. It hugs the skin real tight. You can see how thin it is. It just makes things really comfortable and it helps wick away any moisture off the skin right away. That's my first base layer and I only use a top for that protecting you know the bulk of my body. On top of that I use a merino. This this happens to be a merino polyester blend which I think is the best. I don't use any uh, raw wools or 100% wools. Um, I know a lot of the old old timers or old schoolers go for that kind of stuff but there's a lot better materials to work with out there. Yes wool is warm Yes, it, it stays warm even when wet, but it's heavy, it smells when it's wet for sure, and it's very hard to dry. Now, you know, some of you lonely hicks, you might like the smell of, uh, of wet wool, because it kind of smells like sheep. That may remind you of some of your sexually active days, but I really don't like that. Merino and Ibex with a, with a polyester uh, blend actually helps keep odor down, uh, which is nice. You don't want any kind of moisture or, uh, or perspiration. Uh, next to your skin when you're out when you're out there that is what's going to kill you in fact that's why you want to stay away from cottons so in this case again my secondary base layer is my merino polyester blend uh, ibex is just as good very soft very comfortable helps wick the moisture away from your body and uh, sets up that first layer of warmth i also carry a uh, bottoms for that as well merino blend the synthetics with the mix of uh with the mix of wool really you're getting the best of both worlds. Now the base layer is very important. Uh, once you get that set, I want you to imagine now you're building shells of defense on top of that. Your base layer is the only thing that you want to fit tight against your body. Okay, That helps again wick away that moisture, keep that moisture away from your body. You want to stay away from cottons. There used to be a saying, cotton kills. You want to avoid it. If you're going to use any cotton, uh, you want it definitely blended with some synthetic. Now we're going to build our uh, outer layers up. And the first thing I'm going to put on is a polar fleece. This one happens to be from Columbia. It's a thinner polar fleece and it's actually an excellent product. They have a space blanket woven in to the product itself. I, you know, this is a relatively new acquisition in probably the last year. And it's super warm. I really like it. They're calling it the next thing in warmth or uh, um, temperature control. It's really good, very breathable. That's also important. You're still moving that moisture away from the body. This is a really nice product. Space blanket woven in with a uh, short polar fleece. And what you're doing is you're building up dead space. That's what you're doing with this polar fleece. Uh, fleece has these little air pockets and that's where you're gonna save you and trap your heat, yet you're gonna let it breathe and let the uh, moisture through. Now, just as a side note, this is what I can wear almost every day, especially through fall and even into winter. I can wear just a single 
top base layer and this and I mean for the most part believe it or not I that'll keep me really warm uh, it gives me a lot of freedom of movement especially if I'm working hard at something chopping water you know going outside doing uh, chores just this alone will trap enough heat to keep me comfortable and probably down to 40 degrees now I'm gonna take it to the next level I'm gonna add a secondary fleece on top of my first fleece this one's a little bigger so it's not tight I don't want anything after that first base layer I do not want tight I'm trying to trap dead air so I've got a bigger fleece on top of this one uh, still gives me a lot of movement for any kind of physical activity I'm doing and it's a it's a great comparison because this is a name brand Columbia but this is just a, a, a level three cold weather fleece from the military a polar fleece and this is this is great stuff this is a great jacket you can pick them up pretty cheap uh, this will take me easily into sub freezing temperatures if I put these on but it will not stop the wind it will not stop the wind yet so if it's windy the wind can still rob me of uh, much needed heat in that cold environment now so far in this pile these two fleeces and my uh, my base layers I've got less than three pounds clothing that's what's great about these new synthetic materials now I'm going to bring on the vest again it gives me a lot of freedom of movement because I don't have the arm pieces on this is Gore-Tex lined plus it's got fleece on the inside uh, they call it arctic shielding but it's uh, it's just a Gore-Tex uh, um, fake that stops the wind so I'm going to stop the wind from robbing uh, that that uh, that trapped heat and that makes all the difference now I've really got a great base formula layered system for any kind of cold weather this is basically what I'll take into any kind of uh, cold weather except except for extreme weather uh, if I want to take this into extreme weather I could still add another layer or I can just put on an 800 fill down jacket from North Face and that will seal everything up throw on a pair of uh, down filled bottoms with that and a good pair of arctic boots man I can take I can take tundra weather from here of course I don't need that on this trip but this is really the basic formula for layering that really works guys this could this can change a lot of your experiences out there the other upside you'll obviously see that black and green are my favorite colors but I like soft clothing another thing I really like about the synthetics and I like that because everything I have it isn't just a singular use I can use this for hunting especially bow hunting everything is very quiet what I'm wearing here now for pants you really want to stay away from cotton it'll kill you it, it, it absorbs a lot of water takes a long time to dry and all it does is cool you off you want to get blends nylon polyester blends work great they sell a lot of pants like that now in all the camping stores and uh, they make a lot of surplus pants like that as well this has a little bit of cotton on it but it's mostly polyester blend now if I need to step that up I would put my bottom base layer on and if I want to stop the wind I can just top that let's say with a cheap pair of Gore-Tex or I can bring in the snow pants let's say or I could put on the bottoms of my raincoat you know my Gore-Tex raincoat I could go in a few different directions with that but if you really want to stop it just you know put on your base layer put on your pants and then put on a windbreak and you've you've effectively you know stopped the airflow there but you still got breathability and up here of course you're protecting you know the bulk of your body and your torso where all the heat really is let's get down to the details the extremities on this which are you know equally as important you know you want to protect your hands and your feet and your head for sure I like to use, I think I've shown these before, these uh, merino polyester blend socks. Again, I'm using that merino wool. Uh, those are great socks. And all I need is a couple pairs of those to go on this trip. A neck gaiter is a nice thing to have, even when you're sleeping or sitting still, for sure. It's uh, always nice to protect that neck, even if you've got high collars. And one of my biggest secret weapons against the cold are diver socks. Uh, these are uh, neoprene socks. And I don't like to wear them for long periods of time because they do not breathe. But when it's really cold and you need that, that layer that's going to keep your feet warm, this is the way to go. You just got to remember to take them off and really let your feet breathe or you're going to end up with trench foot. It's going to happen. You're going to get a, a yuck foot. Uh, but these really work. I, I carry them in, almost, um, in my pack almost on every trip because they... You never know, you know, if you get into some really bad weather, the temperature drops overnight, you get sick. These are really nice to go to in your pack, even if it's someone else's problem to hand them out and uh, help them out. Again, with the gloves, I, I 
almost always take these. These are neoprene gloves. They don't last as long as leather, but leather to me is almost useless when it gets wet and when you dry them out they got that stiff crinkly crap. Uh, it's just not that good, even for keeping you warm. Leather's just not that good. I really like these neoprene gloves and these aren't for camping. These are uh, ski gloves. They work great for me the last two or three seasons. They're about $12, $13. I love them. They keep your hands really warm and even when they're wet, they're awesome. My secondary gloves, if I really need to do heavy work like cutting wood or hauling you know, uh, wood for camp, I'll carry a pair of Kevlar uh, gloves, again synthetic, very light, and they dry out real quick. Last but not least is the Yankee Prepper uh, Signature Beanie. Uh, it's a wool polyester blend. You definitely want to keep your head covered, even when you're in your bag at night. It's nice to have a cap on. <clears throat> and probably one of the most useful items in my clothes pack is a scarf. Scarfs can be used for so many things, but uh, they're so adaptable. Again, one, one uh, tool for, for so many different missions. Even outside of keeping you warm, you can use it as a, as a, a rough filter. Uh, you can use it as an emergency tourniquet. But for keeping warm, I can use it as a face mask when I'm hunting. I can cover my whole head with that. Uh, you don't have to have a tactical cool one like me. You know, I've got my uh, kafia, but uh, you can get any kind of scarf as long as it works for you. And lastly, I don't care what you're wearing for clothes. If you don't have the right boots or the right footwear, forget it. Footwear is extremely important. Take care of your feet. Now, I did a video not that long ago showing the t kinds of different footwear that I have, trying to help people out if they're making decisions on, on where they want to go into. And there were, you know, a few people who were like, I don't need any, any expensive boots on it. flip flop to my galoshes. And I guess that's fine if you're not traveling 20 minutes, you know, from your house and, you know, you have to waddle back and forth, you know, from the truck to the burger stand. But if you're going to go into these areas, you need the right footwear. If you're going to be serious about this, you need the right footwear. I put out three of my favorite footwear, and this is you know, going to be my choices for going into the Boundary Waters. I'm going to pick one out of this. Now, I've got my time and, and true-tested Danners. I've had them for almost 20 years, worn, torn, been everywhere, $220 boots, waterproof, lots of ankle uh, protection, great for hiking, great warm boots. I've got a simple pair of issue boots here. They are Gore-Tex waterproofed. Again, great, uh, great um, ankle protection and support. And then I've got these awesome Merrells, $150 Merrells, probably one of the best hiking boots out there. Okay, totally waterproof. Listen, Danners are great, but with all the physical activity, especially bending, you know, down and up in the canoe and picking things up, the Danners are just not, you know, they're not going to give me the movement that I need. The Merrells are great, but they're too short. You're going to get water in those eventually. When you're getting in and out of the lakes, it's going to soak those, and it's going to be a mess. Okay? $210, $150. I'll take the $44 uh, service boots that I got uh, online. Gore-Tex line, great, uh, great um, ankle support and great treads for hiking and moving around. That's the boots I'm taking. Perfect for the environment. Come on, let's go around. 